Well, the next uh, recipe that we wanted to focus on is one that is um, high in a nutrient, uh, well, nutrients, calcium and vitamin D. So um, osteoporosis um, is a disease that is basically the weakened bones, um, weakened thinning um, and decreasing of your bone mass. Now, many people believe that this is typically found within women, that it's a women's disease, but that's actually not true. Um, men can have osteoporosis too, um, especially those who are on long-term hormone therapies. Um, so it is really important to get enough vitamin D and calcium um, together. And so we've chosen specific ingredients today that really highlight the two. Um, the vitamin D actually helps absorb calcium into the bones. So you basically need them paired together um, because calcium is important for that bone health. Um, and vitamin D is kind of like the carrier that brings it into the bones. All right, so um, what we wanted to do, we wanted to do something a little different uh, with this recipe. Um, Stephanie did want to focus on some nice fatty fish, mm -hmm. in particular the sockeye salmon, uh, which is a nice wild caught salmon. Um, you can buy it frozen, it's a really, really great fish choice. Um, we're going to prepare it a little differently. So you can do this obviously on the barbecue, um, great outdoors. Um, we're going to be doing it in a pan and I want to show you a little technique on how to cook this um, indoors. Um, and especially if you don't have a non-stick uh, pan, we're actually going to be using a little piece of parchment paper. So now I know I use parchment paper a lot in this class. It's a great way to reduce the amount of cleanup. It's sort of that nonstick barrier, so it's you know great in the oven, but you probably haven't seen it many times just using it on top of the stovetop. Um, and it's a great little tool to use, especially when you're cooking fish, which can be uh, a protein that is might be a little intimidating to cook for some people because um, you know it's very easy to overcook it. Um, it's also very easy to stick to a pan if you don't have a good nonstick or a well-seasoned pan, um, and. Even in those cases, you usually require a lot of fat or a lot of oil uh, in, in order to prevent it from sticking. So we're using parchment paper. I know I'm gonna keep bringing it over to this side so you can see it. But just heat up the stove top uh, to like a medium high heat, a little piece of parchment paper on top, and then we're gonna actually stick the fish on top of this, okay? Yeah. And again, fish is high in protein as well, um, something that's also important for bone health. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of olive oil. I don't need much in this case because I do have that parchment paper. And we'll season it. Uh, one little trick. You can see how my, my arm is high when I season. That's just not like a fancy chef thing. Um, the reason I do this is so that when it falls, it actually disperses out and it spreads across evenly versus if I did it close and it would just concentrate the salt in one area. So we call it uh, high and dry. So high because you're sprinkling from high and then you want your fingers to be dry. If your fingers are wet, the salt just clumps and you get sort of salt meteors following onto your salmon. You don't want that. Uh, so the fish is seasoned and I'm going to put it, if I have skin on, skin side down onto the parchment and then just lightly press it like this. You can all hear that sear? Yeah. So I definitely want that sear. Even if I didn't have skin on the fish, um, I still wanna get a nice press, a nice sear on top of it, just for the first like 10 seconds, just to get it going. If you don't feel comfortable using your hand, just use a nice fish spatula and put it on, uh, to press it down. All right, so that's gonna take uh, most of the way, I'm actually going to cook it most of the way on the skin side down, about 80% of the way. Uh, so I'll do it for maybe six, seven minutes on one side, and then I might flip it over for like a minute on the other side. In the barbecue, you can do the exact same thing, by the way, okay? So uh, fish, um, salmon specifically, um, is one of those sources, food sources of vitamin D. Um, it has about 600 international units. Um, and you're looking to get about 1,000 per day. Um, but you don't want to have more than 
uh, 2000, okay? That's both for men and women. Um, calcium, so again, you want the, to pair them together, also needed for strong bones. Um, so, uh, but calcium is found in primarily, sorry, I'm gonna take a step back. The salmon has vitamin D. Now, there are other foods that have vitamin D sources, like dairy, usually that's fortified. Um, but if you're not somebody who has that consistently, you do want to make sure that you're taking a pill supplement for that. Okay, so you might want to kind of supplement the two together. Um, and in this case, we've um, used kale. Is that yes? Yeah, kale. yeah. So kale is the calcium um, that you want to. So you can get it also from dairy foods. Um, and again. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes. So men up to 50 years old, um, you want to have aim for 1,000 milligrams of calcium and over would be 1,200 milligrams per day of calcium. Okay. Um, so something, and again, no more than 2,000 um, milligrams per day. All right. So um, salmon's on. It's cooking. I have a backup, so just in case it doesn't work, we're all good. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna start with the soup now. And so I'm making, I'm obviously the salmon you can have any way you like, but we're gonna do something a little different. We're actually make almost like a chowder, like a fish chowder. Um, so we're gonna use almost Thai influenced ingredients, which I love. So we have some of the ginger and lime and scallions and a little bit of that Thai curry paste. Uh, and we're going to uh, sort of build up this really, really nice uh, chowder soup. So the first thing that I want to do with any soup, I want to start off with the aromatics. Uh, so these are ingredients that are going to bring a lot of flavor to the game. Um, does anyone know of some aromatics that they like? Or even the word? <laughs> Maybe it's a little confusing. So like garlic, ginger, yeah, onions, carrots, all beautiful aromatics. You can use whatever you want. We're going to be focused on garlic today, so we're going to add a little bit of that. And we're going to use some onion, which I have here, just some roughly chopped onion. It doesn't have to be red. I'm using red. We're going to add that in there with the garlic and then the ginger as well. Now, I love ginger. Um, it's a great aromatic. Um, the really interesting thing about ginger is that it activates a receptor in our mouths and our tongues that um, uh, signals heat mm. and pain. So it's the same receptor that we pick up for chilies, that capsaicin in chilies, uh, is the same one that picks up ginger. So ginger sort of has, I break it down to sort of three scales of heat. It's, it's most sort of intense in its raw form. So if you really like the intense heat of ginger, then you can add it now, but add it fresh at the end as well. Uh, when ginger is dried and ground, that's the next level of heat. It's still actually pretty intense. Um, and then at its mildest is when ginger is cooked. When you cook ginger, it actually breaks down uh, the structure a bit so that it's not as intense or as hot. So if you like the flavor of ginger, but you don't like the heat, then add it at the beginning of the cooking process, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just roughly chop it up. You can mince it even with a grater. If you like it really, really fine, I like sort of those pieces in there. And we're going to add that to the pan as well. All right. And let that sort of stir around. Um, you can cook it for about three minutes, four minutes, just until it softens, just until it gets some color. Uh, once the kitchen sort of is filled with this garlic and ginger aroma, uh, you know you're probably pretty good. Um, and then you can add uh, Thai curry paste. You can definitely make your own Thai curry paste. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even make my own Thai curry paste. So mm -hmm. if you have the time, do it. Uh, otherwise, there's some really, really easy, you know, store-bought uh, curry paste that has a lot of the ginger, lemongrass, lime leaf, a lot of those really, really nice mm -hmm. aromas in there. Yeah. So we're gonna add some of that. Yeah, and just on that note, um, you know, it adds a lot of flavor, which is great, but sometimes these types of pastes can be high in sodium. Um, so you do want to just make sure that you're getting kind of 
the recommended, which is around 2,300 milligrams per day. Um, reason being, again, coming back to bone health. So too much salt in the diet can actually have a detrimental effect on bone health. Um, so again, you know, it's okay to use, it enhances the flavor of the foods, um, but just kind of being cautious. Um, you could look at food labels, when you look at that percent daily value for the portion size, you just want to make sure that it's anything over 15% daily value is considered high, and anything below is kind of in the lower sphere, so about 5%. All right, so I just, just to show you, I flipped the fish and see how the really nice sort of browning on the, the top? Oh, there we go. It's all right, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll try to tilt it. Uh, so really, really nice browning on the top and you can feel that crispiness. So most of the way on that side and you get a really, really nice crispy skin. I'm going to be removing that anyways for this application, but if you wanted to sort of serve it like that, that's the best way to do it. Um, and again, in this, in this skillet, everything is done through the parchment paper. So I could take it off, and it's really, really easy nonstick to do it that way. Yeah. And you could do that for any type of yeah. meat, like uh, chicken, chicken yeah. uh, turkey. Whatever. Absolutely. OK, so we have the curry paste, the other aromatics. I'm sure you can start to smell some of those flavors, those aromas right now. Beautiful. And then you can start to add any of your other main ingredients. So uh, I roasted some sweet potatoes ahead of time. You can do these on the barbecue as well. Uh, about 20 minutes. I didn't do anything to them. Just wash them. And then in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just until they're nice and soft, they're done. They're beautiful, delicious. The skin comes off. You can even leave the skin on. Yeah, and that adds more fiber yeah. as well. I'm going to take some of it off. Maybe we'll leave some on. Uh, but these, these are fantastic. They're so tasty. And a chowder usually has some sort of potato. But I really like that substitution to a sweet potato because mm -hmm. you're adding so much more flavor to that. Yeah. So I'm going to cut these in half. Leave them in sort of big chunks, and you can let them sort of melt through yeah. the soup there. All you right. see the beautiful color, that orange? Um, so that's another one of your phytonutrients, which is known as carotene. Um, and that beta carotene turns into vitamin A in the body. So really important for eye health, immune function, um, lowering inflammation as well. Beautiful. Sweet potato in there. Um, and then I'm going to add my stock. It could just be water. If you have vegetable stock, chicken stock, fish stock, whatever you want. Again, there's so much flavor in here. And with that curry paste, it's sort of going to create its own flavor environment. So I'm going to do half stock, half water. You need about eight cups or so of whatever you do add. All right. And then anything hearty like kale, cabbage, you can also add now. If you're adding something like spinach or some delicate softer greens, you save that to the end. Um, and then you can add it in because it doesn't really take much time to cook. Yeah. And again, that's including your calcium. Um, just of note, usually um, during the cooking process, we advise not to boil any type of vegetable. The reason being is because all the nutrients will leach, leach out of the, because you usually discard the, the water. However, in this case, since it's a soup, everything kind of remains in there. So in this case, it's okay. Otherwise, if you wanted to cook your vegetables, boiling, sorry, um, steaming or baking or using the barbecue is usually the better option or roasting type of thing. Beautiful. Okay, so bring this up to a boil. Um, and then once it hits the boil, just reduce it to a simmer. Everything in here is pretty much cooked. If I was using raw sweet potato, which I can do, just maybe cook it 
you know, 15 minutes just until it gets, 15, 20 minutes just until it gets nice and soft. Uh, but if I did it ahead of time with the salmon, then that's already done. So it really doesn't take too much time at this point. Uh, so one of the last things I'm going to do now is take our salmon here. Beautiful sockeye. Again, this is going to be a lot easier to clean for you afterwards, mm. right? Nothing stuck to the bottom. Uh, and we have this beautiful fish cooked through. Um, in this case, I am going to take the skin off. So you put the skin face down to cook because you wanted it to get crispy? Like is yeah, so if I was serving it just as a nice piece of fish right. like that, then you'd I would yeah, leave it on, get it nice and crispy. There's nothing worse than like soggy skin, otherwise you know, take it off, but that's a nice way to make it nice and crispy. Gotcha. It also protects the flesh of the fish right. and it keeps it intact. So if I was searing it with mm. it off, it might start to fall apart over a while. Gotcha. So it's a nice way to keep everything together. And then we have this beautiful fish. And once it starts to flake, I'll turn it around, but once it starts to flake apart really easily like this, you know it's done and ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. So that's ready for the soup. Uh, this is a small piece. You can definitely add a bigger piece. This is just sort of to, just to show you. Um, and I did one ahead of time mm. over here, which will ladle into a bowl. And as the sweet potato actually cooks and breaks down, it'll start to thicken the soup a little bit more as well. And I know it's this, like, you know, we're approaching summertime and nice and warm and hot. This can definitely be classified as a comfort soup, but I like soup any time of the year. So whenever. Yes. And you know what? I'll just take a few pieces. For, I'll steal them from here. Here we go. <laughs> Put some of the fish inside, just so you can see. Like that. And, and then you could top it with, I like to top it with lots a green onion, a good squeeze of lime, and I always add it at the end, the lime, because if you cook the lime, you sort of lose a lot of that freshness. And then if you want some fresh herbs, we can sort of tear that on top. So what's that, mint? So this is mint. Mm. That's it, that's our sockeye salmon, Thai chowder. Yeah. yeah.